I hope this finds you very well. My name is Kat for those that have not met me before. If you're returning, it's lovely to see you again. Welcome if you are new. Uh, this is my little space where I talk about my knitting projects, my spiber projects of sorts. And today I'm coming to you from a very chilly Hertfordshire. The temperature in the house is 13 degrees, which I would say is not warm. <laughs> um, yeah, how are you? How are you doing? I hope you are doing good. I am feeling pretty good. I've been really busy lately, which is why I didn't manage to get anything out last week. Uh, I might have next week off, we'll see how things go. I've got loads to share, like, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, finished knitting projects and a work in progress, but I also have more finished um, knitting projects. I have a really fun spinning project that I kind of want to share, which is regarding silk, which is really, really fun. Um, it's a very special fiber. I think it, I don't know, it needs to be highlighted more maybe in the knitting community. Uh, what else? Yeah, I've got weaving that I haven't shared, but today we'll just talk about knitting. We'll have a slow paced chat and things that I've been up to. I will probably put in footage from a few of the places we've been at the end. So if you want to stick around and, you know, take a slow moment to enjoy some scenery, some interesting things that will be at the very end. Yeah, I think that's it in the way of like upfront waffle maybe. I have my hot water bottle today because it is chilly as. Um, this one is the Druid's Hearth hot water bottle cover. That is a pattern that I released last year and I don't know, I just really love this item. This yarn is Hearth DK by Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company. Emma dyes beautiful yarn that she sources herself and dyes naturally. Um, this was gifted me from, like, the, the yarn itself was gifted to me by a lovely, lovely friend and we actually had a hot water bottle along very quietly just together and and then knitters quite liked it so I wrote the pattern up and it includes um, just a stockinette version and kind of directions on how to make it fit any size hot water bottle should you want to do like a tiny hand, hand warmer one or a big a big boy um, yeah so hopefully it won't gurgle about too much but it is it's doing wonders right now. I am also wearing my... Ooh, hey. <laughs> I'm also wearing my Braids of Grass jumper by Albiona McLaughlin. I really love this jumper. I originally dyed, dyed it. I originally knitted it before it was dyed this dark colour. Um, I used... I can't remember the colourway name. I think it was something inspired by Lord of the Rings. So the yarn itself is from You and Ply and the yarn is a Shropshire DK. It is a really lovely DK weight yarn. It's super bouncy. It's like springy. I, I really, I really liked this yarn, but I knitted it in a oatmeal beige. And while I did think it was a really beautiful color, I noticed myself not wearing it very much and that's partly because I really like wearing darker colours but I was really concerned about getting like ruining it which if you've been here for a while I always say I'm like a toddler when it comes to clothes and I also just like to wear things so I thought make sure it can be wear worn and let's just omit that fear of making it stained just dye it. So I dyed it a dark, dark, almost black. It's like a, a I'd say it's almost like a blue brown grey. And I think the slightly heatheredness helped. Um, it's not 100% perfect. There's a mark on the back where it kind of hasn't taken fully. And my guess is that I've done what I said I would do and got a stain of some sort on it. And it's just not been able to go over it. But I'm really happy with the result. The jumper itself is a yoke jumper knitted top down. It has this gorgeous braiding along the yoke. It has 
a cute little cable on the hem which gives it this sort of like slightly frilly shape um, and it also has it on the hem but I've tucked that into my my top <laughs> if that makes sense um, so it's so when I was younger I would roll my tops my jumpers by putting a belt on the inside and then just flipping it under and I do that from time to time but depending on the temperature and what layers I'm wearing I tend to just shove like a cami or uh, like a bralette over the top of whatever I want it to be tucked into and then just tuck it in which kind of generally means it's a bit softer on the body and I like to be really really comfortable let's start with some finished objects I will do back in time to most recent I think that makes sense Firstly, I finished these and the first one just went, it kind of knitted itself. I had, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I, as soon as I dyed up this yarn, it came onto the needles and I finished the first one. And then the second one I took to Norway with me and didn't do very much on it. And then, I don't know, I just very quickly blitzed the second one. So now I have a finished pair of socks. These were knitted using um, a Coridale sock base from Annabelle Williams who is a lovely textiles designer and yarn dyer based. I can't remember, I think she's towards Somerset for some reason. But I, I purchased this yarn ages ago and I mentioned before that I started knitting it and just stopped. I, it was a cream base, it was natural natural and undyed. Um, her yarn can be quite hard to get hold of in terms of quantity that she puts out so I was quite happy to get a skein of undyed but turns out knitting a stockinette sock in undyed yarn kind of wasn't bringing me joy so it sat wound up as a cake for quite a while in my sock yarn box and then I just pulled it out a little while ago on a day that I just fancied doing some dyeing which is when I over dyed this and yeah kind of not long after it jumped on my needles and now we have another pair of wearable known island socks which makes me very happy I actually haven't worn these since finishing them for some reason sometimes I'll just wear stuff and sometimes I'll just tuck them away and be like I'll wait and share them so the sock itself is a toe up sock my preference definitely now I don't think I've knit a uh, cuff down sock in ages maybe probably over a year maybe more um, just a wedge toe so cast on with a Judy's magic cast on and then increase using knit front back stitches because that just no fuss no thinking and then I have done broken rib which I just love for socks the knit round goes so quickly, the knit one pearl one round just adds a little bit of interest, It's it kind of pulls you in and then lets you go and I really like that. And then I went up to a short row heel, I use German short rows, I think, yeah, they're just getting better and better the more I've done them. Definitely at the beginning they're a little bit, um, not bad, but you could tell it was a hand knit sock and obviously this any knitter would know it's a hand knit sock near enough but yeah I'm really happy with them and then some one by round rib just on the cuff uh, I really love wearing broken rib socks and I, I just can't get enough of them um, show you a little bit closer oh, maybe I'll put the hot water bottle under my feet for a bit And my favourite method for binding off, I've spoken about this quite a bit in the past, but I think it's always nice to just know in, 
I just assume that even if you've been here before, you've probably not seen most of my videos. So I do my best to, to say things without hopefully repeating them too, too much. But I tend to do a, a mixed bind off. So I when, when I'm working rib, I will do um, a super stretchy bind off when I'm doing the knit stitches. So knit one, knit two together through the back loop. But then when I'm doing the purl stitches, I will just do a traditional purl one, pull the last stitch over, bind off. So it's a half stretchy, half not bind off. And I feel like that's perfect for me to give a nice fitted sock, but with enough stretch, if that makes sense. So yeah, really happy with these. I'm looking forward to wearing them. They are, so I do tend to do slightly shorter socks. Shorter? That was really Watford. I tend to do slightly shorter socks, so they just about fit my longer Dr. Martins, but when I'm wearing just shoes, I can fold the cuff down. I just I think it's cute, I like it. It also means they're a good length for Alex to borrow um, without looking you know, too short on him. However, I am definitely dreaming of more long socks, and I have knitted one pair, which I will share with you next time, and I'm so, so excited to, just because well, you'll see. You'll see, hopefully. Um, yeah. So, super happy and can't wait to wear. I have, I like to mention what I'm drinking because sometimes it changes, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's interesting. Um, but I am still drinking my elderberry chai syrup and uh, now the weather's turned, it's particularly like warming and nourishing and now this one, uh, I, just all the reasons I could, I just love it. I think it's just all there is to it. This is the most recent addition to Alex's wardrobe. It is the Algiz. I keep, I keep saying Asgill in my head, but it's the Algiz by Nordic Noob Knits who designed it. Um, inspired by some Swedish Berka weavings, I believe. And so I found this pattern when I was in Norway, which kind of gives it a special little meaning to me. The yarn I found, it was new to me yarn, um, at a knitting show that I went to with a dear friend. And there's more about that in previous episodes. And then the contrast colours were gifted to me by someone that I met at a yarn show even longer ago and just everything about this project has been like so special. Um, I got to knit this in France with my parents which was really nice and then I finished it up to the point of having about 20 rounds left and ran out of yarn and I'd considered ripping out part of the body and shortening it slightly to do it, but when it came to it, I was like, no, I've currently knitted it at the perfect length for Alex. He's tried it on multiple times and he's super happy with it. Just order another scale of yarn. And this project feels really luxurious and it is, for me, this is one of the, you know, more luxury projects I've knitted, um, but because of it, I know that Alex is gonna wear this so much and I nearly put this on today. I didn't because I thought it might be easier to show you and I'll show you it on his body, but here it is. Um, it has a top-down construction, it is yoked, it has gorgeous designs both on the sleeves and on the hem. And um, I will say up front, again, the sizing on this isn't, isn't maybe not big enough. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, it's 89 centimetres is where it starts, so it's probably too big for me um, without positive ease and it goes up to 124 centimeters. Um, 
I think you could make it larger by doing Aran weight and we're going to have more more discussions in the future about increasing the sizing but and is from what I understand a new knitter and all the things but that all that to say just a heads up but this yarn is um rum and raisin by raw wool company goodness it's gorgeous I've gone on about it a little bit but the swabbles if I remember is a flock of sheep that Anton raises so the owner of the company that uh, sends it off to be spun and does everything for that company um, but the Wensleydale in this if I remember it might be the other way around are from a 19 year old shepherdess so that just felt really like something to celebrate and support um, and it is so lovely it's buttery and soft it's definitely next to skin soft for me it's less toothy than this Shropshire DK um, it's so bouncy um, and it it washes up lovely Alex has worn this quite a lot, a lot already so I've only been able to wash it I haven't blocked it and I think it doesn't really need it it could do with you know, a little bit of work maybe but we're not going to do that around here um, I love it this is a project where the sleeves are knitted bottom up however I did work the yoke backwards loop cast on stitches and then just knit them down from the top and I don't think I don't think anyone would really notice maybe I'm wrong and it might show up a bit better like a bit more clear on this weird lighting that's happening today but it's so gorgeous I knit the second size I think for Alex I could in the future work a smaller size body and do the larger size arms um, or you know do the first size but shift you know basically uh, there's quite a lot of positive ease in the body and the arms are about perfect uh, I think that's just because he's at the gym quite a lot <laughs> um, but yeah I'm so happy with this project all of the little serendipitous moments that led up to it have made it feel much more grounded than some of my other projects uh, to the point where even we went up to Middlesbrough to see some friends last weekend and I was like oh what a shame your yarn hasn't arrived um, you know, I could have finished this for you and you could have had a nice new jumper for the weekend. And lo and behold, when we got, we packed the car, we were ready to go. Uh, the postman showed up. So Alex quickly sat and wound his yarn while he played <laughs> a round of Magic the Gathering. And I was able to uh, finish it in the car before he needed me to take over driving. And by the time I had got the car started, he was already wearing this, so... It's going to be hopefully a, a for life project that he will be able to cherish and wear and I'll be able to borrow too. Yeah. The final finished object is another rum and raisin project and because I knew I had enough I couldn't resist having a walking project for when we went to London with Alex's family recently and so I cast on a hat the night before I knew we were gonna see them and that evening I must have knit sort of five inches of a hat because it was just so buttery and nice it just went by I really find ribbing no different to stock in it and then by the time we got home I'd finished it so this was basically a 24 hour project but if you've been here for a while you might know that I have lost I think it's three black mohair hats and I'm, I'm very sad about that if I'm honest they are mohair for my hair is very good it it, it doesn't make it frizzy it doesn't aggravate it unlike some toothier yarns um but 
I have enough mohair, black mohair, left to knit a jumper and it feels really wrong to go into that quantity just to knit a hat. So I thought, let's whip up another one. I've got my Let Lopey hat, which I love and will continue to wear, but another dark hat for the wall, you know, the hat box is never a bad thing. Um, and here it is, it's just a rum and raisin, one by one rib hat. So I now have a an idea roughly of what my recipe is, because I know people keep asking. Um, it's approximately, for my style of knitting, 3.5mm needle with about 100 stitches. And I knit for between 8 and 10 inches. And then I divide it into 4 and decrease. And I will do decreases either side of uh, a knit stitch. So you have a line of uh, knit stitches through the middle. Uh, doing it on... 100 stitches it, it can be divided by four but instead I do it slightly off so I'll have 24 stitches in one section 26 24 and 26 um, and then that way I don't have to do any sh like any thinking I just knit to the stitch marker knit one decrease go to the next stitch mark two stitches before the next stitch marker decrease slip the stitch marker knit one decrease get to the next stitch marker but two stitches before decrease does that so it's very simple i haven't blocked this i've just been wearing it i have been enjoying it it is squishy and bouncy and feels good i will wash it but for now it doesn't need it well i've washed my hair i don't want it to it's all damp and wild and why are we so pale? That's better. Um, yeah, so I'm. This was a really fun little project. It didn't take long at all, and was a good reminder that maybe if I'm going to do any gift knitting this winter, it will be hats. Um, yeah. I'm really glad that I could put some of the, like some more of this yarn into a finished project. I've got just a touch left that I will either blend up and add into a fiber blend that I'll do on the carder or just put into another project. But super happy with another little another little hat. And we and that's it. We're on to a work in progress. This project really uh, attracts my hair and Audrey's hair and shows up. So this is Croft by West Yorkshire Spinners in black. It is a DK base, but it feels like a light DK base. And this is a test knit for Kelsey, who is knitting Nakabi on Instagram, who is a natural dyer and gorgeous pattern designer. This is a cardigan inspired by one of the betrayal gods from Critical Role's Alexandria world, uh, called the Chained Oblivion. And it's hard to show because I have finished the body and picked up for both of the sleeves <laughs> you see it's not easy to show um, but it is a raglan construction bottom up Kelsey writes to knit the body knit the sleeves join them and then do the uh, yoke section however I have a really odd length arm apparently and I wanted to be able to try this on as I went. I'm quite happy and comfortable knitting the body. I know where I like things to sit generally, but 
I wasn't, con I, I really wanted to knit the arms, the sleeves bottom down, at top. I just wasn't convinced that this pattern has a thumb hole. I wasn't convinced that I would get it in the sweet spot and with the fabric being quite dense, um, I really wanted to just make sure it fitted just so. So I did what I usually do and did a backwards loop cast on for this um, and have picked up the sleeve stitches. I think there's a chance that it could have been done even neater, but I'm not a master knitter at this point. Um, but I'm quite happy with the result. I did. Ha I do have to admit I picked them up twice. I think the first time I did it, I was trying to knit and purl as I picked up, which just isn't the way to do it. But for some reason I felt like that was right. Um, definitely don't do that. Instead, I picked up exactly where you'd imagine picking up and then immediately started working in pattern afterwards with no issue at all. Um, yeah, on here it's not even really registering. I'm really enjoying this project. This is basically ribbing permanently, which brings me a lot of joy because it just takes a little bit more thinking in terms of, you know, checking before you go to the next round. So every time you get to the stitch marker, it's like, oh, I've already done a round. Wow. And then you're like, oh, I have to do this thing, which is just figure out or remember if it's a knit or pearl stitch to start and then off you go again. I'm looking forward to getting to the cables on the sleeves uh, and then after that it's just the button band and it's done I say that like it's a re really quick project but I'm enjoying taking my time on this but I'm gonna try and work monogamous monogamously <laughs> on this jumper uh, cardigan now just so that I can keep up with um, I am gonna try and work monogamous just so that I can kind of feel confident that I've got this project done in enough time. I am working to release the jelly cube that is basically ready at this point. I've just got a few more test knitters to finish um, and I've just not been able to get the finished object photos of it that I want but I'm really excited to share that pattern. Um, I think it's perfect for Halloween so it's a bit of a shame that it's not out already because there's still just about enough time to knit it ahead of Halloween if you're a fairly speedy knitter. Um, but I think it's beautiful and perfect for, I think, holiday season. I, it, it feels quite fancy. I don't know. I know it's a little bit extra, but it does feel quite fancy and extra. Anyway, um, let's stop talking about that. But yeah, I, 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 want, I, I would like that project not out of the way, but I want to make sure I've got enough time to finish it without having to do any stressing because that's, as someone that has done designs, I don't want any of my testers stressing. So I'm doing that on Kelsey's behalf for her, if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, when I was in France, I took the last of my green fiber that I've been spinning that I blended up and dyed with lovely Marina of Marina Skewer and I plied it while I was there. I did the whole lot. Hit, hit. We didn't have a niddy noddy and I only have three bobbins um, so doing a two ply I only had the one bobbin to spin onto so once my bobbin was full Alex and I, Alex helped me I just wound it around to chairs and then start it again.
and here it is. I, if I'm honest, I really wanted to re nitty noddy this. Oh, it's a good colour on here. Um, I did really want to re nitty re nitty noddy this, and now it's washed and double check what yardage I have. Um, it's definitely sort of a DK Aaron weight, which is wicked. I'm going to also do the wraps per inch and double check, but I re I've been really aiming to spin. Uh, slightly thicker yarn and I think I have accomplished it and also I kind of can't believe that it didn't I thought this was going to be like a six month project but it wasn't it was July August September October so a three or four month project um, and that's with our weekends being so busy I'm grateful for that like I really am it feels amazing and I don't I always say but like I don't under I'm so grateful that my body allows me to do these things again that I could never get upset for being busy but very very excited for a weekend at home this weekend um yeah so I've not had much time to you know just sit and spin for an afternoon or so the fact that I was able to get this done that quickly I still feels really special and like quite amazing and definitely means that I think I'm ready to do a single colour garment spin uh, I haven't this still hasn't quite told me what it wants to be I do think it should be a garment and yeah I think a cardigan maybe which is odd for me but super happy with this spin it's a two ply it has jacob in it from kelsey in florida it has silk and mohair adult mohair um from the uk i say the uk from world of wool in particular so it's probably not british wool but there you go and some romney is the main fiber in this it's really, it's bouncy, it has a little bit of drape to it, um, which I expected from the lovely silk, but yeah, I did it, I can't believe it, my biggest spin yet, and oh, it smells so good, yes, so we'll have a little bit of a think once we've done the yardage and wraps per inch on that to get a good idea of actually what kind of yarn weight it is. I also did a bit of spinning when we were in Middlesbrough and I spun up this random bat that I did that was using some Jacob from just 10 minutes down the road which makes my heart a little happy. It is part of the Jacob that we had spun previously and then it also has some of the remnants of a Neuterden, a little bit of Neuterden fibre I was sent and um, a little bit of the Felview fibres fibre that I was sent um, from lovely Mary Louise. So it's just got a little bit of everything in uh, and I just made sort of an, I think it's like an 80 gram bat, 50 gram bat and yeah I did this all while we were there. It feels very hobbity and it, and it kind of does work with this which I wasn't expecting and that wasn't the intention but it could be a little touch of colour work maybe. I did this one on my drop spindle, uh, that's this Bosworth one that I'm also working on a just a little bit of a trial of a single breed fibre which is white faced woodland which we also had spun so I've got a few fleeces from from the another batch that we were going to maybe send off but kind of de decided even though I've probably got enough to do a full batch still <laughs> um it it's worth doing it but it's just a big investment up front that it's just a bit scary that we don't have right now so I'm just working through it slowly um but I'm really enjoying this the it is a really crimpy kind of fiber to me where, which means it's really bouncy um, and I was just going to try and do a 
a small-ish amount, but hopefully enough to do a project of a three-ply, I thought I could wind this onto two onto my bobbins, uh, keep one amount on my spindle and then ply from two bobbins and a spindle and hope that it works. We'll see. But I'm really enjoying working with it. This is it before it's combed and carded and then carded. Here it is. Some lovely And actually it was Alex's mum who prepared this little bit for me, so that was fun. And tucked away in here somewhere, I will share the footage from it next time, I think, but is some spinning from a, I think she must have been six, six year old little girl, that I showed how to spin when we were at an event. Um, we went to Chiltern Open Air Museum, which is one of my favourite spots locally, and the event was called Wild About Wool. And, you know, if I'm going places, generally I'll take a knitting project or maybe a knitting and spinning project. And I took this and the girl was so enamoured and wanted to try it, so I showed her. So somewhere in here will be some yarn spun by her and I can't wait to, you know, for that little memory to peep back out. Oh, yeah, uh, it's definitely wonky, but here is a little basket that I was, it was an experiment. So I looked on Reddit to see if anyone had done any weaving with hops and there was two very distinct parties. One said to just uh, try and make a basket straight from the fresh vines and others said to wait and rehydrate them. I felt like rehydrating them was going to be the best move because they do have a lot of water in but this just proves it, it's still functional, it still works as a, a janky basket, which I do actually use quite a lot for my fibre now. Um, but I would like to dry out some of the hops before we, before they just decompose for the autumn winter and see if I can't make a little, a little basket that's a little bit more sturdy and a little bit less holy. But I was really pleased for, uh, you know, a first project, not watching a video, which next time I will do, um, just a trial of to see, because otherwise it was just gonna decompose anyway. everything so I think if you want to have a little a little longer with us um, I will pop in some footage from France we went to Montreuil which is a beautiful walled city and Agincourt have a museum on the Agincourt battle which I can't remember it was called like the golden battle or something from the Brits it was not nice. It is a it was a horrific bloodbath, but super interesting and the there wasn't very many finds, but there was really good reproduction uh, examples of things like bags and clothing and some chainmail and some um, weapons. Super fascinating. Um, so that's really I thought that was really interesting, and we also went to a place that had naturally sparkling wines um, but using fruit and um, the red currant one is divine but they also did a non-alcoholic drink that used um, uh, chicory but ash and that was really really nice Let's see if Alex got some footage of that and I will also put in footage of middle spread just because Alex is looking lovely in his jumper and 
I think, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. I also went to the knitting and stitching show, but I think this is long enough for now, right? Uh, so I will talk about and share footage from the knitting and stitching show next week with you if if you want to come back and hang out some more. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, I got so much to share um, and I wish I could do it in even more detail and just sit next to you and hopefully this is good enough. But anyway, I hope you enjoy a little bit of more nature and adventure footage if you're into that. I hope that your projects are bringing you joy. I hope whatever you're doing does make you smile. And I do also really hope to see you again very, very soon. I love you. It's a working holiday, isn't it, Alex?
That's, I reckon people, people have fallen off. I'm looking, getting wobbly and falling off. Yeah. I wouldn't survive that. Well, I'm not sure. 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 Really? Yeah. Is that what you think? <laughs> 